Hello, hello, welcome everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're joining us from around the world. My name is Lynn Minard and I'm a professor here at the Department for Hospitality, Tourism and Event Management at Edinburgh Napier University. And it's an absolute delight to have you with us today to find out a little bit more about our postgraduate programs. I'm not alone here. I am going to be introducing you to four of my wonderful colleagues. Um, the first three are the program directors, the program uh, leaders of our postgraduate programs. They are Dr. Ellis Urquhart, Dr. Sarah Snell, and Dr. Kelsey Hayas. And they will soon be telling you a little bit more about our curriculum, about the wonderful city we find ourselves in, and how these degrees will help you make the most out of your career in our exciting industries. And then towards the end of the session, we will also bring in another wonderful colleague of ours, Ellen, who will tell you a bit more about the application process, as well as any questions around admissions, etc. So while we can't see you and we can't hear you, you can get in touch with us as this is going on. There is a chat function that you can use to drop in any questions that you have at any time during this broadcast and we will be more than happy to answer them for you um, either as we go or at the end. So now without further ado let me tell you three things why, about our programs that I think should excite you as you think about your postgraduate studies future. The first one is that we are in an incredible city. Edinburgh is just one of the most amazing cities in the UK and around the world and everybody who comes here just loves it. It's also one of the greatest cities in our industries that you can find. We have the best festivals, beautiful tourism destinations and some of the best hotels and restaurants in uh, the United Kingdom. That's one reason. The second reason is we're not new to this. Uh, we've been doing um, hospitality, tourism and events management education for about for over 30 years. So we've been around a fair while. And in that time, I've really built a strong network within the city with, around the world of alumni, of industry connections that will benefit you. Thirdly, we're not the only ones saying that we're pretty good at this. We're top 10 ranked. Uh, in the United Kingdom for um, our specific study fields. So I think as you get to learn about uh, what we have to offer, I hope that you might see what an exciting um, offer we, we have for you. And as we go through our different, uh, the programs that we, that we have here, please do bear in mind that they all um, specialize in a range of different fields. So within hospitality, tourism and event management, there's a wealth of different careers you can pursue and we would be more than happy to prepare you for those. But enough from me, now let's hear from some of our program leaders who are going to talk you through their specific uh, programs. So the first person I'm going to hand over to is Dr. Kelsey Hayas, who oversees our postgraduate hospitality programs. So Kelsey, please join us and can you tell us a bit more about the programs that we have? Thank you so much, Lynn. And as Lynn said, welcome. Thank you for joining the call. It is great to have you here. So as Lynn mentioned, I'm the program manager for global hospitality management here at Edinburgh Napier. And it is so fantastic to see how many people have joined our call and are interested in studying hospitality management. Hospitality is one of the most resilient, adaptable, and innovative industries. Over the past decade, this industry has generated millions of new jobs and countless career advancement opportunities. By joining us here at Edinburgh Napier, we hope to prepare you to thrive in this industry. Our program is designed for students who don't necessarily come from a hospitality background, so you don't need to have studied or worked in the industry prior to joining us. We're designing our modules to give you a good taste about what this industry is about, and lots of our modules have an international focus. For example, you might study developing intercultural competencies in the workplace. You'll also notice that the cohort of students that you're surrounded with are also very international. On our program, we have had students from Europe, Asia, Africa, and North America. You might also notice as you move through this um, online call with us that there's quite a few international members on our teaching team as well. Currently teaching on the hospitality management program, we have staff from Egypt, uh, from Greece, myself from Canada, from England, and of course from Scotland. Our teaching team, we really pride ourselves on creating a supportive environment for our students. We operate with an open door policy and we are here to help you as you progress through your studies at the master's level. 
As part of this, in the hospitality management program, you will have a cohort lead who is with you for the duration of your program. We are a two years master degree, so you will have someone from the teaching team as a familiar face to help and support you as you move through the two year program. As part of these two years, you also have the option to do a placement, which is a fantastic opportunity to get involved in the Scottish industry that Lynn mentioned that we have such a rich hospitality environment here in Edinburgh. Currently, we have about a dozen students out on placement working at a range of hotels and restaurants. You'll also enjoy that we have a campus. We're a campus-based university, which means we have all of our facilities together. This can help you really feel like you're part of the university coming onto campus every day. And you can really feel that you're part of the team, seeing the staff and other people in your cohort as you come to campus and join us here at Edinburgh Napier. If, however, you are tempted by another aspect of hospitality, tourism, and events, perhaps you are interested and on the call because you want to talk more about festival and events and tourism. If your passion lies with festival and events, then I will pass you over to my colleague, Sarah Snell, who will talk to you more about this option at Edinburgh Napier. Hi, everybody, and thank you very much to Kelsey for telling us a little bit about the um, Global Hospitality Management Programme. Um, I'm here to tell you a little bit about the Festival and Events, um, the International Festival and Events Masters that we run here at Edinburgh Napier. Um, so this is a, a fantastic programme and it's one which aims to develop your knowledge and understanding of festival and events sector, um, looking at some of the core management issues that it requires, um, but also all offering you a, a great level of understanding around current research, emerging trends and the advanced scholarship within the, end the area. Like global hospitality, we're taught by an internationally renowned, uh, internationally renowned academic, sorry, who've got great knowledge and understanding in the industry, um, and who are passionate about their subjects and what they and they bring that passion into the classroom, which is such a fantastic thing. The benefit of being able to study international festival and events here in Edinburgh is that Edinburgh is the festival city. We have the most amazing resources on our doorstep and we're able to offer you those opportunities to go and um, investigate them with regards to um, perhaps field trips. Um, this year we've seen students go to the Edinburgh International Conference Centre, the EICC, to be able to get an idea of how things work within a conference centre center setting, um, the Leith Theatre um, from a community theatre perspective, but also other experiences experiences um, such as the Johnny Walker whiskey experience and, and giving that students that those opportunities sorry to be able to go and, and investigate and better understand um, what the city has to offer from an events and festivals perspective um, and that's a really excellent opportunity for you all. The other thing that we're really, really great at being able to do is to bring um, leading industry professionals from events and festivals across the city into the classroom. So you might be able to hear from people from, for example, who work at the book festival, the International Book Festival here in Edinburgh, or perhaps um, new and emerging festivals like the the International, the, the Edinburgh Deaf Festival, sorry, where we've got the, the, the managing director coming in to talk to our students as well. The programme gives students this excellent opportunity to be able to really get to grips with, with some of those key management issues around festivals and events, but also to be able to get a really clear idea of what the, the current body do the current emerging body of knowledge is with regards to festivals and events. So things like perhaps social networking or key issues around um, societal um, areas, so such, such as the issues around human rights with regards to sporting events or well-being issues with regards to events at the moment, which are very prominent within the discussions around festival and events. We're also looking carefully at things like perhaps AI and automation in the industry and really looking about what the future might hold for the festival and events industry. But like, um, like Kelsey said, it's not just me and, and Kelsey who are part of the team. We also have a fantastic tourism department. And so I'm now going to pass on to Dr. Ellis Urquhart, who's going to talk to you a little bit more about our tourism degree programmes. Hello, everyone, and a very uh, big thanks to Sarah for that introduction. Uh, my name is Dr. Ellis Urquhart, and I am the programme leader for two of our postgraduate tourism programmes uh, here at Edinburgh Napier University. Um, I really wanted to give just a very brief update, I suppose, uh, in terms of these sorts of programmes and how they differ if you're interested uh, in applying. So the first to mention is called the International Tourism Destination Management Programme. Now that is what we would call a foundation masters and that is designed for uh, applicants who have not studied tourism in the past. So if you're coming from another industry or another scholarly background, uh, that is a perfect programme for you. 
And what it aims to do is really introduce you to the complexities of the tourism system. I'm really beginning to think about how uh, tourism destinations both develop and how they are created. Also thinking about how they are marketed and how they are managed at both a strategic and also operational level. The second program is called International Heritage and Cultural Tourism Management. Now that's an advanced master's and it's designed for applicants who have either studied tourism previously at another institution or perhaps have had some work experience within the tourism sector. And as you could probably suggest by the title, the Heritage and Cultural Programme is more specific in nature. It does, of course, return to wider tourism concepts, but the core focus of that degree is around how we manage heritage properties, both in terms of built locations and also how we uh, manage natural heritage and also cultural activities within destinations. So offering slightly two different aspects here, but the main thing to take away, we offer intakes on both programmes twice a year from September as well as January, and they can both be studied in full-time or part-time mode to work around your other commitments. We've been teaching tourism here almost 30 years, as Lynn was talking about, and all of the academics on the tourism programmes are research active in their particular disciplines. And it brings a huge amount of opportunity to integrate current research practice and industry connection into the classroom. So hopefully just a little bit of insight, uh, but I'm now going to pass back to Lynn, who's going to take on the next part of the discussion. Hey, thank you, everybody. I hope that gave everyone a bit of an insight into our curriculum, the academics um, that we offer here at the school. But of course, it's more to your postgraduate decision than just academics, and we fully understand that. So the next uh, part of this broadcast, what we will do is go through a couple of questions again with the three people you just met before, um, talking about the student experience as well as uh, career opportunities, professional um, interactions with industry that you might have with us. And the first element I wanted to talk about is living in Edinburgh. And I feel I can speak to that personally because I haven't moved here that long ago. Maybe some of you on the broadcast know the city well, maybe others are, um, are very new to it or have never visited. Um, so I'd like to bring someone who knows the city very well back with us, uh, Sarah. Sarah, if you had to describe what it's like living in Edinburgh, what would you say? Thanks, Lynn. So um, firstly, I am from Edinburgh in a roundabout sort of a way. I grew up here from when I was about seven years old. And so I think Edinburgh is a phenomenal place to be. I think it's a really vibrant city, a really exciting place to be. And I think it's an excellent university city. So Napier is not the only university here. Um, there's a number of universities in the city. And I think that's one of the things that makes the city feel very young and very vibrant and very exciting for students to be here. Um, as a student here in the city myself, there's a fantastic social life for you to engage with. Um, and I think it's a really brilliant thing about the city that, you know, there are there are loads of different things for you to get involved with, with a very young feel about the city. And I think that's one of the really important things to get across. But it's not just that. Edinburgh is a brilliant city from the point of view. It's got a little bit of everything for, for everybody. So, you know, it's a it's a historic city. There's a lot of history and culture here. And there's a lot of, um, like Lynn had mentioned, there's a lot of tourist attractions here that you can, and, and restaurants and, and bars and things that you can get involved with. It's very much known for its history and for its culture, for its art and its music. And it's not just um, sort of traditional history and culture and art and music. There's lots of, you know, you've got a national museum and national gallery but there's also independent um, art galleries, for example, and, and, and smaller museums. So there's really something, like I said, for everybody. Not only that, Edinburgh is known as a festival city, and it's one of the reasons why it's such a brilliant place to study these, these industries. We've got so many different festivals, but to name but a few, we have the International Edinburgh Festival, the Fringe Festival, the Comedy Festival, the Jazz Festival, the Book Festival, the Science Festival, Hogmanay. There's so many events and festivals going on in the city that makes it such an exciting place to be. On top of that, though, you've also got fantastic green spaces. So Edinburgh has got a lot of, of green spaces. You've got Arthur's Seat in Queen's Park. I like to go for a walk around Arthur's Seat every weekend. It's a really great way to clear your head, particularly after a busy week. But you've also got places like the Meadows, which is very close to the centre of the city, which has got 
quite quite often where a lot of the students hang out in the summertime. You've got Inverleith Park and the Botanics and, and other areas, and you've got a zoo, which is fantastic, particularly if you like pandas, because there's pandas at the zoo, which is one of my favourite things to go and do with my niece and nephew. But not just that, you've got hills if you like hill walking, and you've got beaches, and and it's not not really my my feeling about the temperature of the sea is that it's not really warm enough to swim in, but there's plenty of people who do go swimming in the sea. So lots of lots of great outdoor things to do. On top of that, though, I think it's really important to say that, you know, Edinburgh is a really friendly place. And it's one of these places that if you do go out walking at the weekend, you'll you'll find a lot of people walking past you or say, you know, good morning or good afternoon. It's one of these places where you can talk to people in the shops, which, as I found when I moved down south to London for a couple of years, was not done thing actually but here in Edinburgh people are friendly and Scottish people in general are very friendly um, and it's a great place to meet friends and, and to, to get to know people. So lots of really exciting things to do like I said a little bit for everybody but most importantly the last point I'll leave you with is of course it is the birthplace of Harry Potter so there's a lot of really exciting things to to discover and a bit of magic in the air um, and so like I said you know a great place to be and a great place to study so hopefully you'll 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 find something there that, that excites you about coming to the city. Thank you, Sarah. Well, if that didn't sell you on Edinburgh, then I don't know what will, because I uh, thought all of those were absolutely wonderful attributes. And every word she said is true. Um, I think this is a very friendly place to live, and I think you would thoroughly enjoy it if you were to come and join us. But now, Sarah was talking about a couple of things, uh, for example, links we have with local festivals, links we have with visitor attractions. And apart from that being very fun, there's also a educational aspect to that. So I would like to bring Ellis back and ask him how all these connections that we've built over the many, many years we've been doing this actually benefit you as a student as part of your studies. So Ellis, please, could you talk a bit about that? Uh, yes, of course. And many thanks for, for the question. A, a very relevant one, I think, um, given the competitive nature of, of, of our industries. Um, what I would say personally is, uh, first of all, um, just to kind of reinforce the, the, the fact that because we've been um, involved in the study area for a long time, we have got a very strong network of industry partners and we're growing that all the time. That actually uh, we're trying to grow our connections in various organisations, both in terms of the private sector, the public one, and into charities as well, so that we can tap in to that business knowledge that will then inform what we're learning and teaching in the classroom. So uh, in terms of examples, for instance, uh, our visiting professors uh, for our subject area, our festival directors from the various festivals across Edinburgh and the local area, and they are actively involved in terms of providing guest lectures, engaging with projects and activities so that you have that constant link with our uh, industry in the classroom. Equally, we have uh, stronger connections in certain areas that we have strong research uh, linkages with. So we have a tourism research centre um, that is based uh, here at Craig, Craig Locker. And as a result of that, we are forming connections with different organisations to work together on research projects. So, for example, strong connections with Historic Environment Scotland uh, and the Association of Scottish Visitor Attractions so that we can both research with them to benefit the industry, but also that research helps inform what we're talking about with you in the classroom. So in terms of how all of this benefits you, it gives you a very applied under understanding of the sector. Uh, these areas you cannot learn just by theory. It's about what the potential management challenges are, what some of those creative and innovative solutions are. And the best way to feed that into our learning and teaching and the experience that you would have is by hearing from those industry partners and their voices. So lots of opportunities, uh, I believe, for those connections. And equally, other more practical elements which may help you as a student. So for example, talking about that Historic Environment Scotland uh, partner, they routinely give us lists of dissertation topics that they would be keen to work with students on from our very programmes. So it's not only about providing knowledge, but there's also providing opportunity. Um, and in terms of more uh, placement-based activities, which, which are gonna be talked about soon. So overall, lots of industry connections and hopefully lots of avenues to learn uh, from those that are already leading the industry. 
It's another great answer from Ellis there because it's true. I mean, these are industries that you can't just learn from a textbook and we don't want you to learn them from a textbook. We are a department that's based in and off the city, in and off the industry, and that's what we want to bring to you. And these industry connections that we have, they're a shortcut to great networking opportunities and to um, have experiences in and outside of the classroom that really um, few other schools will be able to give you to this extent. Now, of course, if you join us for your postgraduate study, that's exactly where your brain is going. You're not just thinking about what happens in the classroom, but also what happens afterwards, right, as part of your career. Going for a postgraduate degree, it's a big decision. So you want to make sure that it pays off in terms of your career prospects once you finish, or perhaps even once you're um, when you're with us during your studies. So I'd like to bring Kelsey back to talk about that. What kind of career support, Kelsey, does the school offer and how can students benefit from that? That's a fantastic question. And as Lynn mentioned, we understand that many of you are looking to use a master's degree to build your employability skills. So you might be looking for employment both while you're studying as well as when you graduate. And we have excellent support in place to help you with that. In fact, we have a dedicated group of employability experts. They're called Student Futures. As Ellis mentioned, we have excellent industry connections, and this is the same for Student Futures. They're very well connected with industry, and they have partnerships that are local here in Edinburgh, but also national partnerships across the UK and international partnerships with employers. Through Student Futures, you can both meet with an advisor one-on-one -on -one to get support with developing your CV and your skills for employment, but they also have excellent digital support. So for many of us, if you're working from home, you have the opportunity to sign in online and take advantage of this support here as well. For example, uh, available to our students is an online CV builder. This is particularly helpful if you come from a different country or culture or even industry background where you may not be accustomed to the style of CV expected for your industry. There's also an excellent interview simulator so you can practice your interview skills. For many of you, you may have experience working in industry, but it may have been a long time since you had an, in an interview, or perhaps you haven't experienced this yet. So this is a really helpful tool available to us. Um, outside of that, we also have opportunities for career development, um, of course, through the network that we have that Ellis was mentioning and industry speakers coming into classrooms. So these things come together really nicely, both to let you network and meet people within the industry, as well as then having student futures to help you prepare the skills necessary in order to secure employment both during and after your studies. Thank you, Kelsey. And yes, indeed, there's wonderful services available to our students and making use of them definitely gets you that step up in the workplace that many of them are looking for. Now, we hope that after all of this, we sparked some excitement with you and that you might be thinking of potentially applying with us. Um, to give you a bit more information about the application process and, and some of the things to bear in mind, in just a minute, I will bring Ellen Fisher in who can tell you a bit more about that. Before I do, let me just say that after Ellen, there will be time for question and answer. So as Ellen is speaking, if there's anything you'd like to know more about, anything at all, please uh, don't hesitate, drop your questions into the chat and we will get to them. But before we do that, Ellen, would you please join us and talk to us a little bit more about the application process? Thank you, Lynn. Um, hi, I'm Ellen. So I work within the UK student recruitment team. Um, and hopefully after um, today's session, um, you're, you're full of excitement and anticipation about applying to one of our tourism, hospitality, festival and events management postgraduate courses. Um, so there's kind of two things that you're going to need to look at initially, uh, the first being funding and then the second applications. Um, so the main um, sort of thing that we look at with funding, if we could just move on to the next slide, thank you, um, is just that postgraduate study can be an expensive undertaking. So you just want to make sure that it's something that you do want to pursue as you'll need to repay whatever you borrow um, plus any interest it accrues. So if you're looking at taking on postgraduate study um, to further your career or maybe for a career change or because you really want to delve deeper into a subject that you've enjoyed as part of your undergraduate, these are all really good reasons to sort of take on um, postgraduate study. So it's a big thing to consider is what we would say. Um, the cost of studying your postgraduate qualification and the funding available to you will be um, different depending on your nationality, where you currently live, uh, the type of course you're studying and also the mode of study. 
Um, so if you're wanting to do distance learning or online learning or anything like that, it'll differ slightly to being a full-time um, postgraduate student on campus with us. Um, the main source of funding for postgraduate um, are postgraduate loans. And again, depending on where you live, your student loan may cover all or part of your fees and you may also be offered living costs, but I'll discuss that in a second. Um, and for anybody who's ever studied Edinburgh Napier or if you're a current student with us, you're eligible for a 20% alumni discount. Um, and this is anyone who's studied with us at any time. So if you studied with us a while ago and you've gone off and done some work or you've traveled a bit and you want to come back and um, take part in a postgraduate course, then you can absolutely do that and you'll be eligible for that 20% off your fees as well. So when it comes to paying for your course, um, sometimes the tuition fee loan doesn't cover the full cost of the course fees. So you'll need to make up the difference yourself. Um, luckily, our postgraduate courses have been designed so that you can um, work as well alongside if you want to have a part time job or anything like that to kind of um, help pay for your tuition fees or to help pay for maintenance or living costs or anything like that, then that's definitely a possibility. We do also offer payment plans to help you spread the cost of the course across the academic year. And um, so this can be really helpful if the loan that you're eligible for doesn't cover the full cost of your tuition fees because it just breaks it up a little bit for you there. Um, there's a specific there's specific information available on our website at course level um, for things like payment plans so that you can see what it would be like for the specific course you're interested in. Um, so as with your undergraduate um, funding, you would apply for postgraduate loans um, on your regional funding body's website. So if you're um, a, a student that lives in Scotland, uh, but you would go to SAS um, or sort of Student fin Finance NI um, or England if you're down south. Um, if, you're if you're continuing your postgraduate study immediately after your undergraduate degree, then you can apply through the same financial body. If you've taken time out and you've moved around or anything like that, it's probably worth just checking um, on the funding body's website just to make sure that you're still eligible um, or if you need to change and look um, to apply elsewhere. Um, so I'm sure we've got a variety of different um, sort of locations and everything like that for people joining the call today. So I'll just touch briefly um, on the different um, sort of areas that you can grab funding from. So if you are a Scottish student, um, funding for tuition fees is changing this year, which is brilliant. So for academic year 2023, 2024, it's actually increased. Um, so you'll now be eligible for £7,000 um, for tuition fees. So it's an up to amount. Um, and then you'll also be eligible for a living cost loan of up to £4,500 if you're a full-time student. If you're a part-time student, you'll just be eligible for the tuition fee loan. And um, so it's worth keeping that in mind as well if you're sort of researching different modes of study. Paying the loan back is really similar to your undergraduate student loans. Um, and at present, when I checked the website the other day, you won't start paying the loan back until you're earning at least £25,375 per year. So all things to kind of consider when you're looking at postgraduate study. Um, if we could just move on to the next slide. Thank you. Um, if you are a student who lives in England, um, the postgraduate loan is available to all postgraduate students, whether you're part-time, full-time, um, and the threshold for repayments and how you repay are dependent on which payment plan you're on. And you can find out more about this on their specific website. Um, with the um, postgraduate loans that come through um, to English students, um, you get paid the lump sum or you get paid a lump sum three times a year. Um, and then it's up to you kind of if you are paying that, if you're using it to pay for your tuition fees or if you're using it to pay for a maintenance loan or a bit of both that's sort of up to you. Um, so good to look at budgeting there. Um, for any students from Northern Ireland, very similar to English students, the loan is available to all postgraduate students regardless of study mode. Um, this is a tuition fee only um, sort of setup, so there's no option to take out any maintenance loans, so you would probably have to have a part-time job um, just to sort of cover things like rent and food and everything like that. Um, and repayments for this start once you're earning over £20,195. Just move on to the next slide. Thank you. Um, so for our international students, it will really vary um, based on where, um, where you are in the world and what course you decide to study. Um, there is a deposit um, that we ask you to pay if you want to come and study with us at Napier. Um, and if you're not quite sure um, what fee bracket you would fall into, we have a tuition fee assessment um, form available online. So if you want to fill that in or if you've got any questions, just get in touch with us. Um, and then if we just move on to the next slide again. 
Thank you. Um, we do also have um, sort of other sources of funding that you can look to. There's a list of bursaries and scholarships managed by the university available on our website. Um, it's also always worth doing a Google search or using dedicated websites such as Find a Masters um, just to see if there's any other uh, funding available for you. It might mean that you have to apply to multiple different sources, um, but it can be worth it as it sort of mounts up quickly if you start getting funding from um, various different sources as well. Um, if you're studying a full-time master's course and you're eligible for the full postgraduate tuition fee loan, we do also offer a childcare fund um, for those who have children. Um, so you can get in touch with us if you've got any questions about that. Um, there's a university discretionary fund, which all students can apply to um, at any time throughout their studies. And this can help you with uh, living costs only, so it can't be used to help with tuition fees. Um, but if you fall on hard times or you just need a bit of extra support, that fund is also there to help. Um, if we move on to the next slide, um, so the fun bit, how to apply. Um, so for current undergraduate students who are studying at Edinburgh Napier, you don't need to provide a reference or a personal statement for the majority of our courses. It's usually only required for very specific courses. And if you're unsure if the course you want to apply for falls into this, you can contact our admissions team. Um, we would recommend getting your application submitted as soon as you've decided to apply, as uh, some courses can fill up quite quickly. Um, and there are limited spaces, particularly with um, international students, just making sure that you leave enough time to get any visas or anything like that sorted out. It's, it's worth sort of keeping that in mind. Um, if you don't have your reference ready, if you're not a current student with us, you can submit your application and then send the reference along later. Um, but any offer made would be on the condition of receiving that reference. For a lot of our postgraduate courses as well, we require work experience, so it's good to send your CV in with your application. We can be quite flexible with work experience and may take it into consideration if you don't quite meet the entry requirements, so I'd also recommend doing that. Um, once you've applied, our admissions team will get back to you once they've processed their, uh, your application. They deal with applications from all over um, the world and all of the undergraduate ones as well. So they're a very busy team. And um, so please bear with them. They will come back to you. And um, it's just a matter of getting through all the applications. And um, so I'm now going to pass back over to Lynn, um, who's going to take us through a Q&A. Thank you very much, Ellen. That was really helpful, very useful information, I'm sure, for all. I know in the chat, some people have asked about an application status update. Uh, those are unfortunately questions we can't comment on right here and now in the live broadcast. However, um, if you saw that email address um, that was shared before, that would be a good way to check in. And also you will hear soon. Um, there's a big, a big volume of applications, but people will come to you soon and we'll get back to you. Um, we have a few questions here. I see one that has just come in on Facebook. Um, I have an offer for the MSc in Heritage and Cultural Tourism. I would like to know what the opportunities are for this master's in Scotland. So thank you, uh, Prashasti, for that question. Um, I think the best person to ask would be Ellis. So Dr. Urquhart, could you join us again, please, and talk a little bit about the um, employment opportunities? Yeah, certainly. And uh, hello, Prashanti. Nice to see you. Thank you for joining us. Um, and a, a very good question to, to ask. Um, <clears throat> well, from opportunities, I think we're talking about, you know, beyond, um, beyond the programme and things that you could use that, that qualification for. Um, it is a specific degree and it brings with it a variety of quite specific skills. So, um, as you might imagine from, from the title, the vast majority of graduates from that particular programme do go in to contribute in either the heritage or cultural uh, sort of tourism sectors, both uh, locally here in Scotland, further afield in terms of the United Kingdom and internationally as well. It is a very international programme uh, and a number of candidates go uh, back to home countries or other parts of the world um, to work within the heritage sector, maybe in their, their home destination. So it brings with it a lot of transferable skills um, that you might be able to apply in terms of individual built or natural heritage attractions. Um, we have so many uh, in Edinburgh that you are never going to be short of employment if uh, uh, there are opportunities there. Equally, some candidates have gone back um, into other sort of cultural sectors, such as arts venues, for example, um, or more artistic parts of the sector. 
Um, equally, you may go into things like the, uh, I suppose, the policy uh, and planning surrounding things like heritage management. So we've had candidates, uh, sort of graduates, I should say, um, working with UNESCO, who administer the World Heritage List um, in a variety of different roles. Uh, we've had candidates uh, go out into other forms of tourism policy and planning, um, such as at a government or local level. Um, and we also have had graduates from this programme go on to further study. Um, a, a number actually have progressed on to do doctoral research uh, in heritage uh, management and practice, um, which we offer, but other institutions offer as well. So there's lots of scope uh, in terms of this particular uh, sector in terms of your future employability. Um, and hopefully that's, that's given you some examples of, of how that might work. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Ellis. Um, there's also a question that's come in um, earlier before the webinar started, and I think it's a pretty good one. So if you look at all of our postgraduate programs, you see that one of them has a slightly different structure from the others, and it's the uh, MS in Global Hospitality. Um, so that one is an extended program, and it might be a little unclear to some people why it is called that um, and whether the placement, which is part of that, is a compulsory part of the education um, it provides or not. So, Kelsey, would you comment on that, please, and join us again? That's a fantastic question and not an uncommon one. So you'll notice that unlike our other programs, the Global Hospitality Management Master's program is a little bit different. We're a two year program, which I mentioned earlier. And in part, that's because we offer the opportunity to take a placement during your second year of the master's program. Um, in terms of whether or not this is compulsory, no, this is not compulsory. You do not have to do a placement, though many of our students choose to. If you choose not to do a placement in industry, there is an alternative. It's very practical and pragmatic and focus. It is a module where you'll be running an online hotel simulation. So students tend to choose between these two options of going into industry and getting some more industry experience, or they might choose to do this online simulation where they're running a hotel where they're responsible for making decisions across an entire hotel and in fact a restaurant. Um, while it's not mandatory, most students choose to take the placement option because it gives them an opportunity to network. These might be future employers, so they might continue uh, working for this organization either part-time as they finish their studies or they might return to them full-time upon graduating into a full-time role. So not mandatory, but a great opportunity. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Kelsey. I think that's the end of the questions we have for now. If you have a last minute one, please type as quick as you can so that we can still get to it. There we go. Rita from Facebook. I'd like to know the employment opportunities for the MSc International Tourism Destination Management. Well, I think, Ellis, that means we will have you back once again. I know there's some touch points between um, her cultural heritage and international tourism destination management, but there's also some differences, aren't there? So might you comment uh, on that question? Yes, absolutely. And, and thank you, Rita. Um, popular today, which is, which is lovely. Um, so yeah, I would completely agree with, with Lynn there. Um, although these are two standalone programs and they do have their own areas of focus, um, the two programs do overlap to some extent. The, uh, you will have shared classes, for example, in some of the modules with the um, heritage and cultural students. But absolutely right. In terms of the destination management program, um, you could, of course, progress um, into some of those sectors that I mentioned uh, earlier, maybe from a different direction. Uh, but from uh, my experience, those leaving from the destination management program go into that, that sector more specifically. So going into things like DMOs, uh, so destination management organizations, uh, things like Visit Scotland, uh, Visit Britain, uh, some of our local ones. And we've had a number of uh, graduates from the program going out into both strategic as well as uh, analytical roles in those particular organizations. Equally, we have had graduates go out um, into other elements of the tourism sector, uh, for example, in a policy and planning capacity, uh, advising things like local government around you know, the development of tourism spaces and organizations, um, or perhaps working with uh, destinations on kind of collaborative uh, destination management or marketing activity. So again, we've had uh, graduates in the past working um, for sort of tourism marketing uh, groups and organizations, 
We've had uh, students go out to be consultants um, for emerging destinations, contributing to their, their future management practice. So again, lots of opportunities, some a little bit different from the heritage and cultural one, uh, but also some overlap that, that you might be able to tap into. Thank you very much, Ellis. Um, I see that we have uh, another question from Prashasti, who is asking, my program doesn't have a placement, but can I still join the placement class? Um, unfortunately, no, but that doesn't mean that there's no way to get work experience. And Kelsey, would you clarify, please? Yeah, a great question. So while the hospitality management program does have a placement opportunity embedded in it because the program is a bit longer, for students who are on the one year programs, for example, for tourism and events, you may not have the placement opportunity. But we do design our program so that the teaching is scheduled across the week so that most of our students are able to take on part-time work. And because we have sent such fantastic industry connections and opportunities for these professionals to come into class and you to network with them, many of our students secure part-time work and they work while they're studying. So there is the opportunity to gain that experience, albeit not through the official placement process. Wonderful, thank you so much for clarifying that. I think we're coming to the end of our Q&A session now. It's lovely to see your questions. It's lovely to feel your excitement. I think you could also feel from us, we are very excited that some of you have already applied and are waiting for your offer letters and some of you um, might be thinking about it and we hope that you will put in an application. We hope, of course, that we will also meet you in person uh, very soon for our next intake or an intake in the future. Uh, please do stay in touch with us, contact us if there's anything that we can help with. You will see below here um, a uh, URL go past where you find more information and where you can find um, our, our contact details. We're also all on LinkedIn, so drop us a line. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. We really enjoyed spending time with you and I hope very soon we get to do that some more. Have a lovely day, evening, morning, wherever um, you are around the world, and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.